With so many roller coasters in operation, it's no surprise that we can have a large range of opinions. Many will have their own selection of favorites, but I think for the most part, we can agree somewhat on which coasters are good and which ones are not. Well, in this video, I'm going to discuss the roller coasters that we cannot decide on. These are the most polarizing coasters, or as my title suggests, divisive coasters. Before we get to my list, do me a favor by clicking on that like button. Also, if you are a coaster fan like myself, please subscribe for future content. Voyage to consider this roller coaster as divisive might be stretching it, but I think there's a large enough discrepancy to make the cut. Voyage is a massive wooden roller coaster located at Holiday World in Santa Claus, Indiana. This roller coaster boasts some impressive stats, including a max height of 159 feet, over 6,000 feet of track, and a max speed of 67 miles per hour. The reason why this roller coaster is divisive would have to be one thing, and that's the trims. Honestly, Voyage should be split into two credits, Traditional Voyage and Trimless Voyage. The Trimless Voyage can only be experienced during the park's exclusive coaster event, Hollywood Nights. As the name suggests, the ride's trims are disabled, providing a faster, more out-of-control roller coaster experience. Basically, everyone who says that Voyage is the best roller coaster of all time experienced this ride during Hollywood Nights. The rest, though, still agree it's a good ride, but nowhere near those lofty heights. Candemonium Why would anyone dislike a roller coaster themed to candy? This is a hypercoaster by B&M located at Hershey Park in Hershey, Pennsylvania. Looking over the ride, we have a height of 210 feet, 4,636 feet of track with a max speed of 76 miles per hour. You'd think that the ride stats like this, everyone would love this roller coaster. Well, you would be wrong. As a fan of this roller coaster, I am too surprised with the amount of polarizing opinions that Candemonium creates, but let's try to dissect the reasonings. First thing has to be the trims. Oh, and spoiler alert, trims play a huge part in many of these coasters on today's list. But anyways, Candemonium features two trims. The first one hits after the turnaround while entering the second airtime hill. This one isn't as effective, but the second one, which is located on the airtime hill prior to the helix wrapping around the fountain, can really bring the train to a crawl. This trim break will practically suck all the airtime out of the moment. The next reason why I think Candemonium is divisive would be the layout. In terms of elements, Candemonium is sort of a miniature version of Orion at King's Island. They almost follow the same pattern minus the wave turn. A lot of the elements on Candemonium isn't anything new. The speed hill can be experienced on Mako at SeaWorld Orlando. The upward helix is somewhat similar to the one on Orion at Kings Island. The same can also be said with the banked airtime hill following the upward helix. Now, to me, none of this matters. The similarities isn't anything new with hyper coasters. Most hyper coasters are very similar. It's an out and back layout that features large airtime hills, which for the most part is what Candemonium does. The ending is where this coaster starts to fall apart. As much as I love that interaction with a fountain, the trims do steal a lot of momentum that would have made the ending a lot more exciting. Let's stick around at the same park and discuss Skyrush, the original hypercoaster at Hershey Park. Unlike Candemonium, where the divisive range from pretty good to okay, Skyrush is considered one of the best coasters on the planet, or to others, a pile of junk. Skyrush stands 200 feet, has a track length of 3,600 feet, and reaches a max speed of 76 miles per hour. With the shorter track length and a layout that stays lower to the ground, Skyrush is a pretty quick ride. Those who love this coaster will sing high praise of the incredible ejector airtime that Skyrush provides. I would argue that Skyrush has some of the most intense airtime moments on any roller coaster. For those who dislike Skyrush, it kind of breaks down to two reasons. First would be the poorly designed restraints. We all know that Skyrush is nicknamed Thigh Crush, which as the name suggests, the restraints will crush your legs. The second reason would be the nasty rattle that this coaster has been developing over the past few years. If you are seated in one of the back rows, the rattle can get rather intense, especially during the first low to the ground turnaround. Intimidator. There's something about a hypercoaster that makes coaster enthusiasts divided. Intimidator is a roller coaster located at Carowinds, just out of Charlotte, North Carolina. This B&M roller coaster features a height of 232 feet, 5,316 feet of track, with a max speed of 75 miles per hour. 
For those who like this roller coaster, we'll talk about the airtime moments that Intimidator provides. If you're riding in the back seat, the airtime moments can be incredible. My personal favorite place to ride Intimidator would be the very back left seat. This roller coaster features the staggered seating, meaning that the trains are a lot longer than your more traditional four cross seating on most of their hyper coasters. With the staggered seating arrangements, those seated in the outer seats will feel more open, which I think provides an exciting experience. Now, basically since the first year of operation, Intimidator adopted a nickname of sorts, Intrimidator. And as that name would suggest, the dislike crew will complain about the trim brakes scattered throughout the ride. The Intimidator has a total of three trims, which is including the mid-course brake run, which also functions as a trim brake. Unlike other hyper coasters, which will usually let you fly through the first airtime hill without a trim, Intimidator puts the two trims on their first two massive airtime hills. If you are seated towards the front of the trains, these trims will greatly affect your ride experience. Those in the back will still get some good airtime, but it's noticeably weaker than you would expect. Intimidator 305. There must be something about the name Intimidator that makes your roller coaster divisive, who knows. But anyways, opening the same year as Intimidator, Intimidator 305 is a giga coaster by Intamin Amusement Rides. This roller coaster is located at King's Dominion in Doswell, Virginia. Kind of like Skyrush, many enthusiasts will say that I-305 is their favorite roller coaster or something near the middle of the road. And there's also some out there that actually just straight up dislike this coaster. I-305, as well kind of the name, stands 305 feet, has 5,100 feet of track, and a max speed of 90 miles per hour. Those who love I-305 will talk about how intense this roller coaster is. I-305 has to be one of the most intense roller coasters on the planet. The first turnaround after the first drop produces some strong G-forces. That is all but certain to make you gray out. The ride stays low to the ground, keeping those top speeds while performing some super snappy transitions. This coaster, the way it snapped from left to right, is just crazy. Those who dislike I-305 is basically for the same reason. The strong G-forces aren't for everyone, and graying out can be a scary experience, especially if you've never eh, had that experience before. I-305 really pushes your body to the max, so those who are just looking for the exciting speeds and possibly a couple airtime moments will leave disappointed. Bottom line, if you love bone-crushing G-forces, then I-305 is your man. If you don't like it, well then uh, you're on the other side of the pendulum. Green Lantern Unlike the previous coasters mentioned where I would say the divisive ranges from gray to okay or good to bad, Green Lantern I would say ranges from good, okay, all the way down to worst coaster ever. Green Lantern is a stand-up roller coaster by B&M located at Six Flags Great Adventure in Jackson, New Jersey. The ride stats include a height of 154 feet, track length of 4,155 feet, and a max speed of 63 miles per hour. Green Lantern will also be our first roller coaster to feature inversions, which it has a total of five. For those who like this roller coaster, we'll discuss the solid layout, inversions, and strong G forces. Also, the stand up feature is praised only if you get your seat properly adjusted, which leads us into the opposing side. The thing about stand up roller coasters is that they can be uncomfortable. The weird bicycle style seat is not the best designed. If it's raised too high, it will cause pain in the groin area, and if it's too low, there is no support for your legs, which during those strong G forces kind of makes your legs feel like they're jelly. Overall, the stand-up coaster design was discontinued back in the early 2000s. B&M did just unveil their new surf coaster design, which is basically a stand-up coaster that has shock absorbers built into the seats. Pipeline, the surf coaster which is coming to SeaWorld Orlando, will be opening later this year. So, the verdict is still out if the stand-up coaster concept can be safe. Magnum XL200, probably the most controversial roller coaster on today's list, which I now I think about, I probably said that about every single roller coaster, but anyways, Magnum XL200 has a healthy following of coaster enthusiasts that still consider it to be the best roller coaster at Cedar Point, and some claim it to be the just like the best roller coaster overall. Others, not so much. Magnum XL200, which is the original hyper coaster, is located at Cedar Point in Sandusky, Ohio. It has a height of 205 feet, 5,106 feet of track, and a max speed of 72 miles per hour. 
For those who love this roller coaster will praise its multiple airtime moments. Basically, this is a roller coaster that was built prior to the aid of computers. The last few airtime hills on the roller coaster are very jagged, almost looks like triangles instead of your more traditional airtime hill. Nostalgia also plays an important part. Being the oldest hypercoaster, many love its quirky charms like the weird airtime hills, jinky transitions, and simple lap bar seatbelt restraint. The opposing side basically comes down to one thing, and that would be the roughness. Those quirky, janky transitions are also pretty rough, and if you're seated in the wrong place, it can be quite unpleasant. To contrast, in 2021, Magnum was my daughter's favorite roller coaster. Granted, she was six, but she loved the roller coaster and we had a blast riding it. Well, in 2022 was a different story. The jagged airtime hills and janky transitions stood out a little bit more, and she said it was a horrible roller coaster, so go figure. Basically, if you can overlook the shortcomings, then Magnum might be one of your favorites at the park, but if it proves to be too rough, then, well yeah, it's not a rideable attraction. Well, that's going to do it for my list of divisive coasters. What roller coasters do you think are divisive? Let me know in the comments below. Also, be sure to click on the like button and hit the subscribe button. Until next time, this is X-Green Thrills.